In the previous example, we looked at how we convert a uniformly distributed load into one point load and then use our equations of equilibrium to work out what the reactions were on a simply supported beam. We're going to, in this example, increase the complexity slightly. And now we have a scenario where we have a simply supported beam. And we're going to choose that the length of this beam is six meters. But instead of a uniformly distributed load, we now have a load that is linearly distributed. So, and we have at the one end of the beam A, that the load intensity is four kilonewtons per meter. And again, reminder that the per meter means per meter along the beam. And at the other end of the beam, the load intensity has risen to 10, oh, 10 kilonewtons per meter. So we have a couple of options of how we could handle this problem. We know what we can do in terms of finding where this load is and what this load is. Let's call this load capital W. So calculating the load is relatively easy, um, but where the load is could be complicated. For this shape, we have three options that I can think of. One is we find the centroid by integration. And we know that we have a load that is a function of x, which is in the form of y equals mx plus c. So the c would be the four kilonewton meters. If we, we could calculate m and have a function, use integration, find out where this centroidal location is. The second option we can think of is we could go online, we could quickly search for so the location of the centroid of a trapezoid. And if you have access to the internet, you could find that in two minutes. Okay, but I'm gonna go for a third option here. And third option, that I see is actually I could split this load into two distributions. We have a UDL of four kilonewtons per meter and a triangular distributed loading going from zero here up to six at the end of the beam. And then I know, so I can split my load into two components. I'll just use a different color. So I could have the component here, let's call that W squared for the UDL, and another component that comes from the triangular distribution of loading. And therefore I don't need to remember the formula for the centroid of a trapezoidal shape, and I don't have to do the centroid by integration. So the third option, and the one that we're going for is Split load into the rectangular shape and the triangular shape. So with that decision made, I'm going to draw the expected free body diagram of our system. So we have the reaction RAY, we know RAX equals zero, some of the forces in the X direction. RBY, then I'll have in the center of the beam, I'll have what I'm gonna call W1, and two thirds of the way along the beam because it's a triangle, and the right angle is at this end, so one third in this direction, or so two thirds if you go from A, and I have W2. So let's put those extra dimensions we have on here. So the distance 
2w1 is l upon 2 and the distance to w2 is 2 thirds of l and finally the total length of the beam is l and in this case we're saying that l equals 6 meters so armed with this information the next piece of information we need to know now we know where the centroids are is we need to know the magnitudes of the loads w1 and w2 so, so for w1 so capital w1 because it's the total load this is a uniformly distributed load so it's w1 multiplied by L so that's the 4 kilonewtons per meter multiply length of 6 meters equals 24 kilonewtons and for W2 slightly more complicated but we have one half of W2 minus W1 so that gives us this distance here. I'm doing the half because it's a triangle. Multiplied by the length gives us the area of the triangle. So this equals one half of 10 minus four. So that's the average intensity along this beam. And multiplied by the length of the beam equals 18 kilonewtons so now we have the two loads and let's just confirm or put numbers into what our centroidal distances are so I'll call this x1 and this x2 let's give them bars to show that they're centroids so x bar 1 equals L upon 2 which equals 3 meters and x bar 2 equals 2 thirds of L which equals 4 meters and now with this information we can set up our equilibrium equations and calculate what the reactions RAY and RBY need to be for this beam to be in equilibrium So first of all, sum of the forces in the y direction. So I have RAY plus RBY minus W1 and minus W2 because they're pointing downwards equals zero. And I can then get that RAY plus RBY equals 42 kilonewtons now i still have two unknowns in this equation so i'll label this equation so that i can use it later now next what i'm going to do look at the free body diagram and what i'll decide to do is take moments about this point a because that's where i've measured my centroids from and set up my equilibrium equation so Taking moments about A, I have going in the anti-clockwise direction, I have R, B, Y, multiply the length of the beam. Then I have going in the clockwise direction, so minus W1 multiplied by L upon 2. And again, going in the clockwise direction, W2 multiplied by two-thirds of the length which equals zero and so I can substitute now the known values in there and take these negative quantities onto the right hand side so I have six R B Y equals 24 multiplied by three so that's this term and then plus 
18 multiplied by 4 and I put this into the calculator take this 6 so divide all of this right hand side by 6 and I get R B Y equals 24 kilonewtons and now that I have this value I can substitute in my equation number one so the sum of the forces in the y direction and sub for R B Y in equation one gives me that R A Y equals 18 kilonewtons and at this point the problem is solved we know both of the reaction forces however as always with statics one things that you should always do is check by generating an additional equation of equilibrium so normally I would looking at the free body diagram I would probably take moments about B to do this and what's also worth doing is redrawing our free body diagram so we have 18 on this side and 24 on this side so we can see and remember our original load distribution was like this but we can see that there is indeed more loading going to this right hand side so the answer seems sensible